on X-Men. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends, Marvel 80 Years, X-Men, Marvel, and Colossus 2-Pack. Today, I'll be reviewing these figures in six categories. Accessories, articulation, design, are they essential to your collection, functionality, and price. Once those scores are totaled, I'll give you my opinion if these figures are a pass or a purchase. So for accessories, really there's not to look at, especially with Colossus. So let's just go ahead and get him out of the way. So all Colossus comes with in the two pack is a pair of fisted hands. So the hands are done well enough. I really like the chrome that Hasbro is using, but I'm very disappointed with the lack of accessories we receive. Being that Hasbro has previously released Colossus in a Warlock wave, they could have at least included the alternate bearded head scope. Not that I was particularly a fan of it, but it would have at least added to the appeal of the two-pack. Now with the Juggernaut, I am very satisfied with what we get. So we receive four hands in total, two gripping or grabbing hands, and two uh, fisted hands. And I really like that the hands are done differently, and I'll just show you that. So Hasbro has done a good job with the vein work. This looks very good. I really like the lines on the fingers. Anytime that I can look at a toy hand and look at my hand and see the similarities, it makes me pretty happy. The nails actually look good here. I would have liked if it was some dirt included here, but hey, it is what it is. So looking at the other hand, I'm glad that it's not the same. So Hasbro was able to include a variety of hands, which is pretty cool to have with Juggernaut. So really the draw in for this two pack is, if you ask me, it's the Marco Kane head. Man, it's ugly, it's big, and I like it. I really like the scope work that was done here. Really has a menacing look. I just like the line work and the facial expression. This makes me happy. And you typically see this a lot with the Storm collectible figures. So I'm pretty happy that Hasbro has included it. And not only did it stop around the cheek area, it goes all the way up to the forehead, to the brow. So that's pretty cool. And if it's showing on camera, because I can't really see it here, this eye is purple. And inside, well, around the eye, I should say, is purple. And inside the eye looks to be a color of maybe red or maybe the purple does continue in. And the hair looks good. There's some wash throughout, done in a black. So I really like this. But not only did Hasbro include the head, they actually threw in the helmet as well. It is very soft, but I just like how it's ripped open, how one side is leaning to the other. And in the inside, it actually shows some... Uh, silver paint. So this is really a nice job done here by Hasbro. And I'll show you a little bit later uh, how the head looks on Juggernaut. So don't worry about that for now. So with accessories is really the tale of two tales. With Juggernaut, I would give him a 10 out of 10. He's really a character that doesn't have a lot of accessories. So for Hasbro to find a way to throw in the Marco head as well as the open helmet, genius part on them. For Colossus, simply with the additional hands, uh, I would actually give him probably a 3 out of 10 for accessories. So being that I don't score the figures separately, it's just a combined score for overall accessories. I'll be giving the 2-pack a 6 out of 10 for accessories. So I have to completely reshoot the articulation part, and I am not particularly thrilled about that. So for articulation, let's start with Colossus. His head is able to look way up, all the way down. It's able to rotate a full 360, and you do get a decent amount of pivot. So with the arm, it's able to come out to about that much. If you choose to, you can rotate it a full 360. 
there's an upper bicep cut and we have a oh, it's very difficult a uh, single jointed elbow bending in about that much i uh, would have liked more range of movement and with the hand it's able to rotate full 360 and if you find the hinge you are able to get it to go side to side and up and down so now with the torso it is very similar to the torso on juggernaut which we'll get to later so you're able to get phenomenal crunch going all the way back all the way forward being that this is more of a one-piece torso there is no pivot at all you do get rotation however at the waist so with the legs, you get much better range than I anticipated. The legs go way out for a big guy. They're able to come about this far out, go about that much backwards. You do have an uppercut, uppercut here in the thigh. You do also have, is there a row? Yeah, you do have rotation. And you have a double jointed knee bending in that much, which is very good. Ooh, my leg is extremely floppy. So there's no rotation at the boot. The foot, however, is able to move. Let's try this one. Well, it's able to move way down. You get about that much movement up. And it seems as always with Hasbro Legends, the ankle pivot is extraordinary. So now moving on to the big guy. So now with the head, I do not expect to get that much movement. So the head, I guess is able to look this far up, which is actually very good. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So it can rotate a full 360. And surprisingly, you do get some pivot. So with the arm, it's able to go about, and I just was about to stop about that far. You're able to rotate it a full 360 if you choose to. You do have an upper bicep cut and you have a single jointed elbow, not giving you a lot of range of movement, bending into about this much. So now moving on to the torso, very similar to what Colossus has, that one piece uh, concept, which I'm not particularly crazy about. However, you do get some crunch back, not a lot, much more forward. Just like with Colossus, there's no pivot. You do have rotation at the waist. His legs go up, out about that much, which is pretty good. Forward that much. You do get some rotation. Not really an upper cut, but you do have two pieces of his leg. I'm, I'm tempted to pull this apart, but I'm not. But if you can see, if you can look here, you'll be able to see. So you have one piece that provides let's see i could be wrong about this no so you do have one piece that provides some rotation and then you have another piece over it giving added movement so now the knee is single jointed bending in about that much and this may hurt you for some running poses so now with his let's see do you get rotation no rotation at the boot the foot is able to move up about that much all the way down and you do get a great amount of pivot. So for both figures, they both have some limitations. For the two of them, you receive limitations in the arm. The elbow does not bend that much. For Juggernaut, there's also some limitations within the legs. For Colossus, not as much. So with the torso, you are able to get a good amount of range of crunch, particularly with Colossus. However, you do not get any pivot. So if I had to score each individually, Colossus will be around the eight point. Juggernaut will be somewhere around the seven to six. So collectively adding the two, I'm going to give a seven for articulation. So for design, I'm gonna do something different, something that I haven't done with this channel before. So when it comes to characters, it always depends on the artist's interpretation of that character. So I remember Juggernaut to be huge. And in my opinion, for both Juggernaut and Colossus, they seem both on the smaller side. So we're gonna go ahead and measure the Juggernaut. 
So from the tip of his foot, or bottom of his foot, all the way up, Juggernaut is just short of nine inches, or maybe eight and a half. Juggernaut is about eight and a half inch inches. So now I was doing some research. According to the stats that I can pull up, Juggernaut is about nine and a half feet. Being that these are six inch scale figures, that means that this Juggernaut should be approximately nine and a half inches tall. And he's a bit short of that. So now for overall design, I don't have a lot of glaring issues. One of the things that I'm glad it's here, but then I don't like it at the same time would be this floating helmet. I don't like the gap that's underneath here. And if you decide to move the head forward, sure, it's able to come up some of the seam, but then it's open way in the back. So now I'm pretty sure that the reason Hasbro did this is so that you can have articulation with the head. And I would rather have articulation than to have this down. However, it will hurt it as far as for the overall design. The other area I wish that there, I'm not gonna even say shading because we typically don't get that with Legends. I wish this Juggernaut was a bit dirtier or grittier, if that makes sense. His boots are ridiculously clean. So I'll probably go over this with uh, some brown or variation of black just to dirty him up a little bit. Looking in a little bit closer, I have some, I'm just gonna call it extra line work, like right in this area. Seem like something happened during sculpting to where maybe a piece of hair fell on the figure and they just decided to paint over it. So I don't particularly like that. There's some areas where I see sort of the same things on the hands. So for overall proportions, he's bigger than the average Marvel Legend, but I don't feel that his girth is big enough. So I feel that he could actually be taller as well as have more mass. Now to go into some of the things that are done well, I do like the brown that's used. I do like the vein work and then it's carrying from the top of the arms all the way down to the hand. And I really like how it look on the hand with the exceptions of some swirl marks. I also like how, I'm just gonna call them bracelets for lack of a better word, how they're all dented and banged up. There's some good scope work here. So for, for you collectors, excuse me, you customizers or painters, you can just touch this up and really make it look good. So let's jump over to, oh, actually before we jump over to Colossus, I almost forgot to point out, I really like the white in the eyes. I'm not sure if that's coming through on camera. Let's see if I can maybe zoom in just a bit. And I really love that the tooth is chipped. So now let's just take a look at Colossus. So just like Juggernaut, I feel that Colossus is a bit on the smaller side. So measuring him. Colossus stands just short of eight inches, which I'm actually surprised. So the stats that I was able to pick up, it says that Colossus is about seven and a half feet. So that means that the Legends did a real good job of giving us a Colossus that's pretty accurate to scale. So now where some people may disagree with me is that I'm assuming that this design was taken from the Jim Lee Colossus. However, there are some inaccuracies as far as I can tell. Believe that the wrist gauntlets are bracelets are a bit too short. Also, I've seen versions to where there was actually gold going through these, whether it was gold on the end or it was a bit longer and it was more gold coming through. Some versions do not have this yellow and black up top. The boot is all the way red. And I'm used with some of seeing the belt with the square X-Men logo and I'm just gonna call these bullets because they look like bullets. Um, I've seen the belt to where there were extra bullets on each side. So I did the best that I could do of, of pulling up accurate Jim Lee versions of Colossus. And then, you know, Google is not 100% accurate. So I'm not 100% sure if all the photo, photos that I did pull up were uh, straight from Jim Lee. I'm pretty sure for you major X-Men fans, you can tell me or not. 
However, this version is very close. Not ideal, but no, 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 let me go back. Um, it is ideal. It is very close, maybe not 100% accurate. So for overall design, let me go ahead and bring the Juggernaut here. If I was scoring them individually, I would give Colossus a 9 out of 10. And for Juggernaut, a eh, score would be somewhere around an 8 out of 10. So for both, I'm going to give an 8 for design. So are they essential to your collection? Well, we received both of these figures before. With the Colossus, this is much different than a simple repaint. There is some scope work, there is some retooling. So this is a much different version of the previous Colossus that we have. And I believe that this is the one that most collectors want. With Juggernaut, pretty similar to what we received before. However, in my opinion, this version is better. We received alternate head scopes, we receive an alternate helmet, and we actually receive open and fisted hands. I don't believe that the other version came with both. So as far as these two being essential to your collection, I'm going to give them a nine out of 10. So for functionality, both figures stand particularly well. I do have them standing on a soft surface and they're having a hard time standing on that surface. So they may fall over. Okay, I was able to get them to stand. Let's try the same with Juggernaut. He is much easier to stand, especially on a hard surface. So I may not be able to get him to stand on this surface, but rest assured, he does stand very easily. You may have to tilt him forward just to compensate for some of the weight. So as far as, excuse me, so for the functionality, it benefits posers that this part is actually not glued down because you're able to tilt it, to lift it, to rotate it, to have Juggernaut looking in different ways, which is pretty cool. So to where this hurt it for the design, it actually helps it for the functionality. I wish for the torso that Hasbro would have used the Dr. Oct design the floating piece over the other piece that would have worked much better for juggernaut however we get this one piece torso and it can be a bit limiting what really hurts him in the functionality department is that it is very hard to get him in a running pose not saying that you can't get him in some sort of forward running stance probably something like this but you're going to have to find something to hold him a stand something to prop him up and this is a pretty heavy figure so you're going to need a hell of a stand to be able uh, to be able to hold them so moving on with colossus for functionality i'm going to start with the major issue on this and it's this leg so this leg is extremely loose it is so loose that i'll actually be returning this and ordering a new one it came out of the package this way this did not happen for me posing the figure so I'm pretty sure most people don't have this glaring issue. However, on mine I do, and I want my action figures to last for the test of time. So this won't last. Before I total the score, I just wanna jump back to the Juggernaut for a moment because I nearly forgot something. So another is issue with the functionality part with the Juggernaut is being that he is a builder figure. You have stuff like that happen pretty easily. So for overall functionality, I'm going to give the two an eight out of 10. So I completely forgot a section of the video and the functionality part. So I'm going to see where I can put this in. Hopefully it transitions pretty smoothly. So for Juggernaut, you simply remove this part of his head. The helmet and the face are all interscoped it maybe if you heat it up perhaps you can separate it but at this point it comes like this so now for the K Marco head you just plop it on like so looks pretty odd without the helmet I certainly won't be displaying him like this but here he is all ugly and whatnot so now you can just slide this piece over it 
like this. The reason or the way that you know that you have it done correctly is that this piece should be slotted over his eye. So again, with like that floating section that I mentioned previously, I don't like that. So perhaps I will see what magic I can work to make this appear just a little bit better. But what I do like is this, just the ripped open helmet. It really looks good. Also to change the hands, should be rather simple. Just give a good pull. And the hands, the pegs are already attached to them, which I truly like. Just plug them in place. Just like so. So the wrist guard fell off. And if you want to see what his hand looks like without it, there you go. And for Colossus, it will be much easier as he simply comes with an additional pair of hands. So you just... Ooh, that's in there pretty tight. All right. Whoa. Almost knocked down lights and everything to get that removed. So once you have that off, just simply plug this into place. And now you got a fisted Colossus. And there you go. So for pricing, these figures come in at 60 bucks. With New York City sales tax, that brought my total to $65. And I was able to pick them up from GameStop so I did not have to pay for shipping. So now let's take a look at what they come with. Colossus come, comes with a disappointing amount of accessories. However, Juggernaut, on the other hand, comes with some welcome, wanted, and great accessories, especially if you missed out on the first version of this guy. So now is a two-pack worth the price of admission. So this is how I look at it. I'm looking at it as you are receiving two figures that could be builder figures by themselves. And we know with Marvel Legends, usually you have to purchase six to seven other figures to put someone together. So now if you wanted this Juggernaut, for example, from the previous wave, I want to say it took seven figures to put him together. That's about $140. So the fact that you're able to get a character that size plus Colossus, which could also be a builder figure for $60 is a great bargain. So as far as pricing, I'm going to give them a 10 out of 10. Before I move on to now, is it a pass or a purchase? I just want to point out that I'm very happy with these two packs that Marvel Legends are doing. I'm actually hoping and I'm pretty sure that the Kingpin that came out not too long ago that we'll probably be, excuse me, we'll probably be receiving him in a two pack. And I'm so happy if we do because I chose not to buy that wave as I really wasn't invested in those characters. And now with my Marvel Legends, I don't buy all Marvel Legends. I just grab the few that I want. And this is typically why I don't do Marvel Legend videos, because for those of you who may be looking for me to review all the characters from that wave, I just have a few. So now back to if this is a pass or a purchase, this is an absolute purchase for two figures this size for 60 bucks for the accessories that Juggernaut comes with. This is a steal. I feel that Juggernaut by himself could have been priced for the $60 and I think a few people would have still went out and purchased it. So that gives the duo an overall cliff score of 42 out of 60. So here's Colossus and the Hawk from the Hawk vs. Wolverine 2-pack. And here the Hawk stands just the hair under 9 inches. I did some digging, and according to the comics and stats, the Hawk ranges anywhere from 8 to 25 feet. Depending on how big he gets, I do not want a 25-foot Hawk. To me, the perfect Hawk size is somewhere between 8 feet and 9 feet. So here's Hulk next to Juggernaut, and the Hulk appears to be just a tad bit taller than a Juggernaut. And in my perfect world, the Juggernaut is actually bigger than the Hulk, and I'm gonna say he actually has more mass. So in this department, the Hulk is winning both of those. Here's Colossus next to his X-Men teammate. 
Here's the Juggernaut next to another large figure, Marvel Legends thing. Here's Colossus next to Mezco Darkseid. Here's the Juggernaut next to Mezco's Darkseid. So, I've been pretty active with reviews in the last two weeks. More active than I've been in a while. I'm pretty sure that this is going to slow down. I do have some figures that are coming in tomorrow and some that are slated to be here by the end of the week. I'll do my very best to see if I can get those reviews out to you. So I just want to thank you for tuning in, sticking around, and I hope to catch you during the next review.